Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. I am Madam Yusna Liza Hamid. In today's presentation, our focus is on subsequent measurement cost model. And under this subsequent measurement, we are going to discuss on the impairment of asset with its relevant accounting treatment. And the question I've picked up today is common test question, May 2021, question 1D from FAR 270. So let's look at the question. And as I mentioned, we are going to focus on the impairment of asset. So let's look at the question and some of the inf information that were given. As at 1st of January 2020, the carrying amount of machine owned by Doryland was 30,000. So this was at 1st of January 2020. Right, the machine was bought. This is showing you that the date of purchase. So the date of purchase is is on 3rd of January 2016. So this is the date of purchase. I put here DOP. At a cost of 50,000. So don't get confused the carrying amount and the uh, the uh, date of purchase, the initial cost. So the information is still on the same item, the machine, but it was a different information. The useful life is 10 years. 10 years here refers to the expected useful life. And the company uses cost model, which is our focus today, to subsequently value the machine. So on subsequent measurement, the company opted for cost model. During the year 2020, due to outbreak of a new virus in China, there was a sharp decline in the demand of Dory Land's Berhad product. So there was this uh, situation as at 31st of December 2020, this is the reporting date, uh, the uh, company decided to perform an impairment test. So there is an impairment test being performed by the company on that machine that was having a sharp decline in the demand uh, that is used to produce the product of the company. It was found that the value in use, value in use was 22,000. So, uh, in an impairment test, you will normally compare the recoverable amount. You will compare the recoverable amount with the carrying amount. And recoverable amount here would be the higher between, the recoverable amount would be the higher between the value in use and the fair value less cost to sell and the fair value less cost to sell was determined at 20,000 so if you compare the value in use with the fair value less cost to sell you would notice that the value in use is higher so this will be our recoverable amount to see whether there is uh, an impairment loss or not we need to first determine what is the carrying amount on the impairment date. So the impairment date is on 31st of December 2020. So let's look at some planning. Before we do the planning, let's recap some of what you have learned before under impairment. So the MFRS 116 prescribed that on subsequent measurement under the cost model, uh, if you opt for cost model, an item of PPE is carried at cost, less accumulated depreciation, and less accumulated impairment loss. So here is where the impairment will chip in. And the carrying amount would be as a result of taking the cost, less accumulated depreciation, less accumulated impairment loss. Uh, we are going to make adjustment for impairment loss as well as accumulated depreciation to arrive at the carrying amount. So here we will ignore if there is any changes in the fair value or any uh, amount that was being revalued because that is the policy of the company is to use cost model. 
So these are some of the factors that may have caused an asset to have been in, impaired, physical damage, a technological obsolescence, faulty processes that render the asset to be incapable of operating in the manner intended by the management. And in our case here, the good produced from our PPE machine can no longer fetch sufficient return. So there was a sharp decline in the sales of the company. So the impairment loss would happen where the recoverable amount is lower than the carrying amount. So the carrying amount has to be written down and that requires the entity to determine whether the asset, uh, the machine in this case, is being impaired by conducting an impairment test at each reporting or at each uh, balance sheet date. So reporting date at each reporting date. Entity shall assess whether there is an indication that the asset may be impaired. So the assessment of uh, impairment is normally uh, indicated by these factors. Right? And the, you, the company needs to go and estimate the recoverable amount. So the impairment will happen if recoverable amount is less than the carrying amount. So recoverable amount is given in our case, as I mentioned earlier, it was the higher between the value in use and the fair value less cost to sell. So here you can read what is a value in use, what is fair value less cost to sell. And impairment loss shall be recognized as an expense in the case of cost model. Uh, it will be recognized as an expense directly in the profit or loss or if it, in the case of revaluation model that will or can be um, actually um, charged against the asset revaluation reserve under the uh, revaluation model. But our focus today is cost model so we are going to see that the impairment will be recognized as expense. This is under cost model and therefore um, that would have to be ref reflected in the statement of profit or loss. So let's look at our question again and if you uh, would start by drawing the timeline. So if you see here the um, date of the purchase of the machine was 3rd of January. So this is the acquisition date. The acquisition date of the machine and if you look the impairment date was on 31st of December 2020 31st of December so this is the impairment date 31st of December which is at the end of the current year and there was an indication of impairment where was the indication? It was due to the sharp decline in the demand of the product. So when there was a sharp decline, it would have affected the sales or revenue of the company, which is the heart of the company revenue itself. And indication of impairment has been um, indicated by the decline, sharp decline in the demand. And therefore, the company decided to perform an impairment test. And you can see here the fair value less cost to sell if you compare with the value in use. The value in use is actually, actually higher. So therefore, the recoverable amount will be the higher between the two value. And the recoverable amount here would be 22000 which is the value in use since the value in use is higher than the fair value less cost to sell. So um, from 3rd of January 2016 up until 31st of December 2020, this was five years. This was five years. And therefore what we need to do is we need to find the carrying amount which is the carrying amount of the machine with, that will be arrived at cost minus accumulated depreciation on the date 31st of December 2020 and later we will compare that carrying amount with the recoverable amount 
and we will see whether or not the carrying amount is higher than the recoverable amount. If that is the case, there is an impairment loss. If not, there is no impairment loss. Okay, you are asked to explain the accounting treatment regarding the above case. So first, start by doing some calculation as I mentioned. You need to go and find out what is the carrying amount. First, put the cost. The cost on the date of acquisition was 50000 Next, find the accumulated depreciation from the date of acquisition. From the date of acquisition. DOA, date of acquisition, up until the date of impairment. DOI. So the date of acquisition up until the date of impairment, it was 5 years. So I divide by 10 as the estimated useful life was 10 years. And I multiply by 5 to find the accumulated depreciation for the last 5 years. And that was 25,000. That gives you the carrying amount of 25,000 because 50 minus 25. So this green amount here is the carrying amount as at 31st of December 2020. Uh, the impairment test revealed that our recoverable amount is 22000 as the fair value less cost to sell is lower than the value in use. We picked up the value in use. And the next one is to determine whether there is an impairment loss. It is an impairment loss in our case because the carrying amount is higher than the recoverable amount. And that was determined to be at 3000 And this is the journal entries to record that or do the adjusting entries. Debit impairment loss. This will be in the profit or loss and part of the profit or loss. And you are going to go and credit. You're going to credit the accumulated impairment loss so there's a typo there so i just correct them that was credit accumulated impairment loss 3000 so you are asked to explain the accounting treatment the first one is to show or to mention the indicator of impairment loss so here the indicator was due to the sharp decline in the demands of the company's product because of the out outbreak of the new virus in china the second one is to mention the impairment test that was being conducted here by comparing the carrying amount as at 31st of December 2020 of 25,000. Please show the calculation in your explanation. So here it was cost 50,000 minus accumulated depreciation 25,000. Alternatively, you can also find the carrying amount here by taking the carrying amount on 31st of the on 1st of January 2020 given in the question and you divide by 6 years the remaining useful life and um, that one will give you the accumulated depreciation 5000 and you can uh, take 30000 minus 5000 the carrying amount on 1st of January minus the accumulated depreciation and therefore you will get still the same amount 25,000 but I'm showing you uh, only one workings here but you can also find 25,000 by taking 30,000 the carrying amount given in the question this one 1st of January 2020 and deducted with the depreciation of depreciation of 5,000 that can also give you the answer but in my case I'm using the cost minus accumulated depreciation so here the recoverable amount was 22,000 recoverable amount is the higher between the fair value less cost to sell so that 22,000 is the one that we pick up 22,000 next is to mention that the impairment loss, how much is the impairment loss? The impairment loss is 3000 since the carrying amount is higher than the recoverable amount. RA is recoverable amount. Impairment loss, the accounting treatment, it should be expense of under cost model. It should be expense of or debited to the uh, profit or loss as impairment loss in the year incurred to the statement of profit or loss. You have to do it in the year incurred. And thus, the carrying amount of the machine as at 31st December 2020 will no longer be 25,000 but will be reduced to its recoverable amount of 22,000. 
So just some information for you, the new depreciation after the impairment, impairment so meaning that beginning next year onwards, 31st of December 2021, right? But this one is just extra answer. New depreciation after impairment is 4,500, where you will use the recoverable amount 22,000, and that is divided by the remaining useful life, five years. That was being revised based on the new carrying amount above new carry mount above right so that's it for the presentation of this part of the question i'll see you when i will see you with that i have a pleasant day ahead and thank you assalamualaikum and bye bye